My name is Fatima Casau. Um, first of all, I want to tell you that I am Spanish and my English is not very good. <laughs> but I, I, will to, I, will, I will try to speak in English as best as I can. So my apologies for this. Um, I have been working in software development for eight years and currently I work as Java architect and a Scrum master in Paradigma Tecnológico, a software company from Madrid. Since seven years ago, I am specialized in Ruby and Rails technologies and recently I'm interested in Spring Boot projects. Finally, I want to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity of staying here today. Well, um, in short, um, what are we going to see in this talk? Uh, first, I have to tell you that this is an introduction about Spring Boot and Groovy, so if you know all about both, uh, I think you won't see anything new in this talk. Well, um, as I have already said, I'm going to talk about the Spring Boot and Groovy and where you could use Groovy in your Spring Boot uh, project because I, I think that uh, usually when, when somebody talks about a Spring Boot, uh, think about Java as development language uh, because they don't know Groovy or they don't know that that can use Groovy in a Spring Boot project, but yes. Uh, you can use Groovy as language in a Spring Boot project. Um, even some component, components of a Spring Boot are implemented with Groovy. So we go to see a short introduction of a Spring Boot, a short introduction of Groovy, and how or where use both together. For example, using Gradle, Gradle developing tests with Groovy and the Spock framework, using Groovy templates, or why not anywhere in your Spring Boot project. Also, I will tell you uh, how to use GORM and GSPs in a Spring Boot project outside Grails. And I will show you many code and give you examples of all I want to show in this talk. In first place, uh, what is a Spring Boot? Spring Boot is a project from Spring that allows you to develop standalone Spring MVC applications easily. Probably you think about the many configurations there are in a Spring project, but Spring Boot follows convention over configuration, allowing auto configuration or configuration with annotations, eliminating the necessity of use XML configuration files. In other hand, uh, Spring Boot allows you to start uh, and build production application quickly because provide an embe embedded container and database according to the dependencies specified in the build system. So you don't need to configure this to start to work. Um, additionally, we can use Groovy and of course, all of its features only including a dependency or other dependencies related with, with it. Finally, we can run an application quickly thanks to a Spring Boot CLI tool. Um, of course, you can find samples and documentation uh, about all of this on the Spring Boot website. Now, uh, the other main actor in this talk is Groovy. Um, as you know, uh, Groovy is a dynamic language, optionally type it with static typing and static compilation capabilities, capabilities for the Java platform. Um, thanks to an easy and expressive syntax, it's easy to learn for Java developers. Furthermore, uh, it integrates easily with any Java program, delivering powerful features, including closure, runtime, and compile time, metaprogramming, functional programming, scripting, powerful tests, and so on. So if we combine the powerful of Spring Boot with the future of Groovy, we obtain a couple of powerful tools that allows to developers work in an easy and more productive, uh, interesting, and amazing way. 
Um, let me let me to show it with examples. Um, first, we go to see a little but powerful example um, that uh, we can develop an application that can be contained in a single tweet and execute it quickly with a Spring Boot CLI. But before all of this, uh, I want to talk about a useful, um, useful tool. Uh, could we, you already know this tool, is uh, GVM. Do you know GVM? Yes. This is the Group Environment Manager tool. Um, it's for manage, managing version of multiple, multiple software development kits, such as Groovy, Rails, Gradle, Spring Boot. Um, I will use, uh, use it, uh, some of these in, in this sample. To use it, um, you can download, download in its website, gvmtool.net. It's running most Unix system as Linux, Mac, Solaris, or in Windows with Sidewind. It's written in bus and only depends, of course, on ANSIB uh, tools. Uh, these are the actual candidates, and um, this list grow beyond Ruby, Ruby candidates. I show you quickly uh, how to install GVN and how to install, install the latest version of Spring Boot. Uh, you can see in this line, first uh, to install and download a GVN tool, and later uh, some lines that you have to write in bus RC file in Unix systems. This is a list of useful commands of GVM tool. For example, help to show how to use GVM, to list available versions, installed version and the current version you are using, uh, install to specify the version of a framework, um, GVM use to specify the version of a framework that you want to use in this terminal, um, GVN default to specify the default version of a framework that you want to use always, or GVN current to list all current versions of all framework you have installed or specified the framework. Uh, uninstall also to uninstall a version of a framework. And this is the code of the this Groovy script that you can run. Uh, this can be uh, contained in a, in a tweet. Uh, here we have, the, uh, we have uh, some lines. Uh, in Northern Ham, I have an annotation at rest controller. That means this is a controller component. Uh, another annotations to, for example, request mapping to determine the URI. Um, finally, uh, a simple method that returns the message, hello world. To execute this, uh, we open a terminal and go to, the, to this path that, con that contains the Groovy script and type spring run hello world that Groovy and, and this execute. Uh, we go to C. Okay, this is my script, okay, and I have installed some version of a Spring Boot, so if I run a Spring Hello world, that's Groovy. Uh, sorry. This is start the application. Start this application in that, that, that. So if we go to local host, 
18, 80, 18, 18, sorry. You can see that this is executing. <clears throat> but what happens behind behind this? Um, this this our script. If you want to run with CLI tool, is like this, but Really, if we want to execute this Groovy script with Groovy, it must have these lines. In other hand, the use of Grape. Grape is a jar dependency manager uh, embedded into Groovy. And let you quickly add Maven repository dependencies to your class path, making scripting even easier. The simple use is as simple as adding an annotation at your script that adds grab. Um, also, I have to include some imports and a main method uh, that you can see here. So if we go to execute this script, this is the script. Uh, with the grape, with the use of grape. And if I execute this with Groovy, this do the same as with it, with Experience CLI. Okay. If we go, it's the same. Okay. Now, um, where could you use Groovy in, or where could you introduce Groovy in your Spring Boot applications? In short, uh, in anywhere, okay? But we go to see the different sites in the project where you could use uh, Groovy bit by bit. The first option is use Groovy uh, in the process to build the project using Gradle. Um, with Spring Boot, we can build our project with Maven, but also we can use Gradle with, but also, sorry, we can use Gradle. With Maven, we have to manage a static XML uh, file, the pom.xml file, but with Gradle, we have a flexible and modular Groovy file that is more easy to read thanks to a friendly syntax base on Groovy DSLs and a plugin model. With, with Gradle, we have a powerful building tool with any feature, uh, many features such as support for multi-project, dependency management based on Apache IV, with support and integration with Maven and IV repositories. And also, we have a large list of tasks based on Ant to manage our application. And we go to see some code. Um, to install Gradle and create a Spring Boot. Uh, we can download and manage our version of Gradle with GVM tool. Um, and later, we only need to create um, a build.gradle file with some dependencies and execute the command gradle build to compile and test and assemble the code into a jar file. Uh, these, are, these are some lines to, to execute the sample. And if we execute Gradle tasks, we can see a list of available for our project. Um, this is an example of build that Gradle to start to work with, with Spring Boot. Um, we can see some plugins such as Groovy, Idea, or Spring Boot. And also, we have got the configurations about the jar file, the name and the version of our project, below the repository's configuration, and the dependencies. And if you include some plugin more and execute the tasks command, uh, you will can see new tasks in the list. 
the tags are related with the dependencies available in the, in the project. And this is uh, the, uh, the main uh, application uh, class to start with Spring Boot. Um, in this example, only we have this, the, the main method and the annotation of Spring Boot application to start. Um, we go to execute the sample. One moment. Um, we go, like, go to stop. Okay. I create a beer um, spring one spring one those things. Um, this is plain Ruby com spring one. And we create build gradle file and we create the application main class application now a uh, if we run if we if we run gradle task this show the list of tasks available at uh, this this moment but if I edit build gradle and copy the lines of the the example mm. okay and um, I execute again I have uh, some some task more, for example, related to the ID plugin. Okay. Now I edit the application that Groovy file and put the lines of the example. Oops. Sorry. Compile. No. Graded. Bit. This executes some tasks and finally build successful. And now, graded run and run the application. This is the application. And that's all. The application is, is run. OK? OK, I go to continue with the examples on the presentation. OK. The next step is uh, testing with Spock. Do you know Spock as a framework to test applications? Yes? Okay. 
This is um, another site where you use Groovy and is implementing tests is, uh, using the framework Spock. Uh, for me, this is my favorite section. Um, I like to implement tests with Groovy and Spock framework. I think that is very easy and, and is funny. Um, okay, Spock uh, is not only um, a, a test framework. Spock is a test specification for Groovy and Java projects. With an expressive uh, language, it's also based on Ruby DSLs, and this makes our tests become easy to read and well documented. Moreover, when an assertion failed, um, the exit is very, very intuitive and easy to read as well. And we go to see some examples. Um, for example, this is uh, a test with a Spock that tests the Google Maps API. And in this example, uh, uh, we can see that with the Spock we can define tests with descriptive signatures, and we can organize the code in intuitive blocks such as given or set up to set up initial variables, for example. Uh, when to execute an action, and um, then to test the result. In this block, we need an we need an assert. Only test if a sentence is true or not uh, by the use of Ruby true. This is another example, and in this in this case, we have two blocks more: uh, expect and where. With these blocks. We can test different combinations uh, of data in only one test. And later we will see what iteration it has failed and what not easily. Okay. Um, here uh, we, we can view the way to solve the assertion failed. Uh, it's very easy to read the failure, and in addition to this, uh, we have more features with different tags and utilities. Um, you can visit the documentation and test uh, these samples. And I think that this is a good point to start with Groovy and know the features and the simplicity of the language. Um, this is an example of a report uh, with Spock. Okay, and in this case, we can see the different iteration of the of the test, and what fail, uh, what failed, and what not. Okay, and if you have to use uh, Spock in a project uh, uh, with a Spring Boot, you must include these dependencies in the build that Gradle file. Okay. Um, if you uh, want to see more information, uh, for example, in this uh, in this site, uh, there are more examples. Um, in this the site docs that Spring Framework uh, there is the documentation about the the Spring Framework. And now go to execute these examples. Um, I have this project. Okay, one moment. Okay. Um, this is a simple Spring Spring Boot project, and we have the application main class, the build Gradle file with the dependencies that I show you, okay. Um, I implement, I implemented this spec with a spoke. This is the example that I saw before. Okay, and now I go to execute with 
task test. Um, verification test. This is the list of tasks of graded. Okay, we have the results. The output of the execu execution. Okay, and we go to see the generated report in here. This is the report, and this is the execution, okay? Um, in this case, in this test, we can print the different values of the address variable thanks to the tag uh, and roll, okay? We go to continue. Um, as I said before, um, we can use Groovy anywhere in our Spring Boot applications. Um, we can use Groovy in controllers, domain classes, repositories, services in anywhere and if we need we can combine java and, and groovy easily that is if we need have classes in java for one reason and in other hand classes in groovy it is possible okay and you must to know that the most important features of of use groovy over java is that our application will be very simple expressive and flexible and we'll have less code, and if there are less code, there will be less error, and we, we are more productive. Furthermore, uh, with Groovy, we, we have many features available than with Java, because Groovy provides the GDK as an extension of uh, JDK with many, many features about the use of a string, collections, control structures, closures, and so on. And finally, uh, you could think about the um, about compilation in runtime run or dynamic typing, but if you are worried about this, you must know that you can use a static compilation or a static typing with annotation at compile static and type check in, in your classes. In short, all you think about uh, all you think about you can do with Java, uh, you can do with Groovy and, and more. Now uh, I'm going to show you how to can implement a REST API with a domain class, a JPA repository, and a controller using a Spring Data REST and a Spring Data JPA. Um, well, this is a very simple example, but you can complete and add more functionality as you want. Uh, this is an example of a domain class uh, with um, a Spring Data JPA, simple customer class with three, three attributes and a method to a string. And here we have a repository class of uh, a Spring Data REST uh, and a Spring Data JPA. I use uh, the, the tag uh, the annotation repository REST resource, and I define uh, the relation and the path to access to the to the to the customers. And only uh, here I. 
I've implemented a method find by last name. Okay. Later, uh, this is the example of a customer controller with with only a method uh, find by ID that overrides the the method that provide the repository. And in the application that Groovy, in the application class, I put some lines to add some, some customers at the database. The dependencies that you need to start to work uh, with this example is, uh, are, are these, um, Spring Boot Starter Data Rest and Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. Um, for example, uh, H2 database. In this site, you can find uh, more, more examples and documentation about this example. And now I go to execute this example. We can see the customer domain class, the customer controller, and the customer repository. And also, I have added uh, some test more. The customer res spec to test uh, the, the API REST, okay, uh, create a new customer via REST and find a customer via REST. And also, the customer spec to test the repository. Okay, with a spec and where blocks. Um, now, I go to execute some tasks of Raven. Application. Okay. Um, if I go to What happened? Spring one plus X. Sorry, I go to see what happened. Customer repository. Customers. Customer. Okay. 
sorry, I don't know why this not work. Yes, but um, in the customer repository, I have uh, the path customer. I try this, I don't know. I don't know. I try to clean and work again. <laughs> Sorry. It's very simple example. Run. is without the name of the application because I don't uh, configure custom, yes. I don't know. No, no, yes, I don't know. T-O-R? I can see. Sorry. 
um, I I try with with Chrome. I don't know what happens. Um, okay. This is the the JSON with the the customers, and also I can select an ID or find my last name. Uh, last name. No. Sit. Okay. Well, this is the sample of IPI REST with Groovy. Um, I continue with um, Groovy templates. Uh, another possibility is the use of Groovy templates. Um, Groovy template framework is based on markup build, build that permits a pretty and easy way to write uh, readable Groovy views using Groovy DSLs. Also provide an easy way to replace variables in the view. Um, you can use layout in Groovy templates as we go to show in the next example. Um, I go to show you how to use Groovy templates. I then a new method in our controller, um, a new controller to render a home page. This is a, a, a template for list customer. And we have an UL block where a customer list uh, is iterated. And for each one, its name is printed in an LI element. And as you can see, we can pass a list of a uh, list and iterate it in, in, the, in the view easily. If we return this view and in the model, uh, we send this list of customers, we obtain the result, we go to see running the application. Okay. And to use this, uh, you need to add this dependency in the build, uh, in the Gradle that build file. Okay, Spring Boot is started, Groovy template. And in this site, you can see more, more examples of the use of Groovy template. I go to execute. Okay. I go to stop the application. Um, we have a new home controller that rendered the class model and view, and I pass the name, the path of the view, and some variables. Okay, uh, the view is here in resources, templates views home template this is the template and also we apply a layout and this is the layout okay as you can see it's very simple uh, define some components some elements of uh, an html uh, file and in this example i pass uh, some variables in this way, okay, and in this way. And um, the other method in the customer controller is to list customers. And um, I return this model and view, and I pass the path of the view, of the template and I pass the list of all customers. 
Uh, this is the template, as you can see in the example. Okay. Um, I go to execute it. Okay. If we go to customers, this is the template. Okay, I print a list of customers, and this is a simple link to go home, the home controller. Okay, it's very simple. Only for so the use of Groovy templates. Okay, um, the next step is uh, the use of GORM. GORM is the Grails object relational mapping for for Grails. And since Grails da, uh, to that four, it's possible to use GORM outside of Grails. And this permits ac access relational database or MongoDB with GORM. Um, in, for example, in a Spring application, including the core rate dependency in the project. With GORM, we can map the entities automatically. Uh, and we have dynamic finders, criteria, persistent methods, validations, and more. And we don't need implements, getter, and setters. Uh, we have uh, implicit constructors, um, uh, implicit primary key. And with this feature, our code is, is even, even simple. Um, only the problem is, uh, I don't know if this is being supported yet. OK? But I go to show you an example because I think it's interesting. Um, this is um, a customer domain class with GORM. Uh, I, I've changed the, the, the dependency of uh, Javax persistent for Grails persistent. Um, this is, sorry, this is the, the class with, with Groovy and using GORM. Okay. Uh, now, um, see how to use a domain class with GORM. Uh, for example, we can instance a new object of the class with a map in the constructor, and we have not defined this constructor. And on the other hand, we have dynamic finders without implemented. Um, for example, find all, find all by some attributes, get. Uh, um, many more um, criteria and so on. And these these are the dependencies that you can you have to to include in your in your gradle.pil file to use to use GORM with Hibernate. And I go to show you the example. Okay. In 
the wheel rather we have these dependencies Ruby templates um, and and Grails, uh, Gorm, Hibernate, Spring Boot. Okay. And also, only I've changed the customer uh, entity. And in this case, the import is Grails that persistence. And in the application main class, I change the way to create new customers, find the customer with method list, method get, find my last by last name. Okay. And now we go to run. This is very difficult with no mirror displays. As you can see, now uh, we have not a customer repository because we, we are using uh, GORM and we need to use uh, the repository uh, as in the case of Spring Data JPA. Um, we go to see the example. And this is the same. OK, no, no change. Um, the last example where you can use Groovy, and in this case, uh, a component of Grails is a GSPs. As gone, since Grails uh, to that for, we can use GSPs, Groovy server pages, outside of Grails. But in the same case of GORM, I'm not really sure if currently it is supported, but I go to, to show you the, the example. Um, uh, with GSPs, we have a large list of, of tag libraries that we can use to make our views more simple. Also, we can create easily our own tags or we can define layouts, templates, and reuse the code easily. Um, this is, uh, these are some, some piece of code or, um, of how to use con uh, some tags of GSPs, for example, conditional tags as if and GLs, and iterator, uh, GIT, uh, or using a finder that iterates a list uh, 
with a condition, for example here, and also the use of GDATE format or to render template, sending a model, and many more, many more tags. Um, also remind that you can you can implement your Avant tags easily with with GSPs. Uh, the dependencies that you need to include are are these. Um, and okay, to 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 complete this talk. Um, I want to tell my conclusion of, of this. Um, why use Groovy? Um, if you use Groovy, uh, as I've said before, your application has less lines of, of code, so less errors. And if there are less errors, you can find them easily. So you will be more productive. And remember that with Groovy, you can get more more features uh, for your project, and you can implement cool tests, um, and you can use cool utilities. Uh, so this is uh, you have for me a uh, super vitamin IC project, and then um, why not use Groovy in your Springboard applications? Um, Use Groovy, try to introduce bit to bit in the application. For example, begin with a spoke test, later introduce Groovy in the code of your services, for example, um, and so on. Um, I finished, I have finished it uh, before the, the time, before the four o'clock, but that's all. Thank you.